The story basically revolves around I'm Zori and her friend. So you have Zori, the main character, then her friends, you have Tammy, you have Tammy, the one that looks like Tokyo Makiwa. <laughs> you have Lara, the oil tycoon in the making. You have Adesua, the lawyer. Hi guys, it's your boy Album Kenneth and if today is your first time watching any of my videos, please subscribe and also hit the like button so that YouTube gets to recommend more videos I make here on YouTube and you get to watch them and you end up not missing out because at the end of the day, nobody wants to miss out. So today's video is a book review on the book called The Smart Money Woman by Arisi Ogu. It's an African girl's journey to financial freedom. Now the book itself has gathered a lot of praise, but let's just talk about the author first. The author is quite accomplished, so it's not like any of your get rich scams, that kind of thing. And praises for the book have come from people like the president of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, Dan Gote himself, the founder of um, Genevieve Magazine, Tara, the founder of Tara, the founder of Bella Ninja. The book is good. So for this people to like, write down testimonials about this book it's awesome and it tells you what you're about to expect so the cover of the book might trade with some people i mean people that don't like color pink and get it in so you might be like hmm this book i'm looking at you with one eye and the storyline itself too is not conventional it's it's quite, I don't know, I don't know the word for it, but it's quite different. It is different, actually. So you have this novel-like story, and at the end of each chapter, you get like a tip um, that goes with the story. And it's just, in all contexts, just good to read. And for me, I read it in the day, so I could not drop this book. I made sure I finished it. And it's also good to see that I'm practicing some of the tips and advices they give in the book. The story basically revolves around um, Zori and her friends. So you have Zori, the main character, then her friends, you have Tammy, you have Tammy, the one that looks like Tokyo Makiwa, <laughs> you have Lara, the oil tycoon in the making, you have Adesua, the lawyer that likes her husband too much, and you have Ladun, I'm just here to spend my husband's money. And you have Mr. Tunde, the boss for um, for Zori, and I must say, the lady who puts um, Zori on the path to financial freedom or explained it to her. Then you have Tesola, who later became um, Zori's boyfriend and was like pushing her to maintain her core. So, Zori, obviously, like the first chapter, broke, <laughs> is to be broke or not to be broke. So, Zori is what you consider a Lagos big girl. In this day and age, imagine earning 600k per month, which boils down to like 7.2 million per year, and you're still complaining about money because you own things like Chanel, Alexander McQueen, Louis Vuitton, Gucci, all these kind of things, and you go to expensive lunch dates with your friends at Serca, um, RSVP, all these fancy, fancy places in Lagos, and you also buy very expensive Nigerian designers like uh, Labi or something, I forgot the names in that book. So the first story was basically break down who Zori is. So she obviously born and bred in Nigeria but did like this country, um, did like university abroad then later came back to work in Nigeria and also has this group of friends that I just mentioned and just the first chapter just looks at her breaking down her expenses, which roughly at the time was over a million naira. And still then, you learn later in the book that she didn't even calculate the expenses well. So the major one she had was service charge in the apartment she stays. Um, the rent was over a million, 2.5 million naira. Then the service charge she owed was over almost a half a million naira. So that's like 450k. Then she had uh, a surgery she was planning to do, her insurance didn't cover it, and that would cost her 950,000 naira. Then also something along the line of like a car that was faulty and she needs to fix it, and the mechanic was asking for like 200k. 
So she sat down here like calculating how she was going to come out from this mess and all this put together. Because if her salary comes at the end of the month, it's still 600k. And if you put all those figures I just mentioned, that is over, that's over like 1.3 million, right? So how would 600k cover that? I remember I still have to leave for this 30 days before your next salary comes. So that was like the preamble or like the entry into the book. So it just goes around explaining Zuri and how she battled her financial problems and also it put in snippets of um, her friends too. So Tammy is talking Makiwa. I don't know if it's really talking Makiwa but for me it looks like talking Makiwa because Tammy is living the life right among all this all of our friends so Tammy comes from a wealthy family and also have this mentality of um my boyfriend better be rich right he might not be married but he should be rich before we get anything started and she owns a fashion studio where she thinks she's running a business but she's just basically doing a hobby then we have Ladun um, who is just my money is my money, but my husband's money is our money. And <laughs> I'm just here to teach my husband how to spend his money. So that's Ladun. She married the rich man. But later I didn't know that the rich man she married, that came from a rich family, was not really working. And they were basically using his own father's money to live. So when the father died, everything just went like hellfire. And that was a whole different story. Then we have Adesua, who is Madame Righteous, in a way. And everybody knows her problem. Like, it's an open secret. But to her, her eyes are still blind somewhat. And basically, she's a lawyer who gives all her money to her husband. Because the husband is an up-and-coming entrepreneur with film businesses, like records, like CV loads of film businesses. But not unknown to her, he also takes this money to spend on side chicks, right? And doesn't really invest this money, just plays with it. And she has like this somewhat devilish mother-in-law who doesn't look at the fault of her own child, that's the man, but blames it rather on the lady who is just trying to like love and respect and grow together in this marriage. Then we have Lara. Now Lara is the biggest of all of like in terms of money end. She earns three million naira monthly. <laughs> Thinking about that money alone, it's heavy. So three million naira monthly, but she only managed to save like two hundred k. If you read the story, and most of her money goes into responsibilities, so paying for school fees, paying for apartment, here and there for family, and she's still single and just trying to make ends meet. So. It just goes down to elaborate like the financial struggles of Zuri and how she plans to overcome it and learn about financial education and also the stories from her friends here and there. Then also how Mr. Tunde almost fired her for just being incompetent um, at work. And also something that is very key uh, that the story touched on was just Africans and their respect towards money. So. In other words, like it just highlighted the point that Africans are more superstitious, so we don't believe bad things will happen, so God forbid it, right? But and it also talks about like our negligence our negligence to paying insurance and things like just having conversations of about money in the house. So she pointed a fact where it stated like how many do how many people know about the necks of kings on breadwinners bank account statements or company um, documents right or just emergency documents that most people don't know about this information and when that person is no longer with them it caused a lot of trouble because if nobody was prepared and there's no will nobody wants to write a will because everybody's afraid of the future that kind of thing so hence the superstition and also highlighted facts on emergency funds so how many of us have emergency funds so emergency funds are things that are money that are being kept in case of emergencies so they're going to be put into investment platforms that are liquid and could easily be liquidated in case of anything and should consist of about six months of your end income um, Six months is a long time and it's difficult to even do that. And it's just uh, hard for a lot of people to like, oh, 
take six months of their end income and keep somewhere just in case of emergencies. So it just looks at like the bad attitude and bad habits towards money. And also talk about like wealth being a mindset and not just something you are required to do. It's a mindset that you need to like grow grow into. Because to be honest, rich families have those mindsets, but poor families do not have the mindset. Like someone once mentioned to me like a wealthy person could feel poor, but a poor person could also feel rich. So in the case whereby a wealthy person is looking at your financial, seeing your profit margin and saying, oh God, if I don't put things into order, I might lose it all. Or a poor person, on the other hand, might end, let's say, gifts of, let's say, million naira. Instead of saying that, oh, let me just invest this well and put it into a medium that will expand this gift I've gotten, it's rather of the mentality of, oh, we don't know when the next one is coming, so let's just eat this one now, that kind of thing. So the story just goes on and on in that sense. And to be honest, if you like gossip, right, or if you're a gossip out there, it will suit you because <laughs> Tammy has the gist. And there's also a funny character, Chinasa, that came out of one story and it just it was explored and basically this character is good girl gone bad and she knows everybody she's the little sister to all the big boys out there but the underlying story is that she's sleeping around with all those men and talking bad about her friends in the open right so Chinasa on her own is just a kiss so the book in itself might face a lot of like backlash in terms of storyline, in terms of like the cover like I mentioned earlier and just it being not the conventional finance book or finance help book you would expect it to be but for me I really like it the way it is because it's down to earth, it's easy to read, there are not a lot of big words here, everything has been explained. The only thing I would also complain about would just be like the excessive adverts to me at first it looks like adverts because i know how this thing works but it's just excessive name drop name drop in but it's good like it's it's good bad mistake i don't know how to put it in a sense that it's high it's highlights like some successful african made women who are um, making it in africa and i think a lot of people should know about them i think that was like the mindset she had in putting like these names and brands into it. It was good but at one point it was like I uh -uh now and see what's happening, did they pay you? That kind of thing. So but it's good like hearing if people people that didn't know about Bonnelly Austin Peters will know about her from this book. So it, it will help in terms of like general knowledge. But the storyline is not conventional but it's good and it's very easy for anybody to read and I think it raises a lot of important questions that you would be asking yourself and it also gives you like guidelines on what to do after a chapter like okay this is the lesson you have learned here and this is what I think you should do right it doesn't work for everybody but at least it just has that generalized point of view that should work for some people or people could build ideas off of so that's that that's my opinion about the book and it was really really interesting for me i read it in less than 24 hours to be honest i read that book because of tammy not even zuri because tammy got the gist <laughs> you know so but it was good um reading the book and shout out to rc out there good luck on your next book i think it's coming out september 30th of 2019 and to be honest i can't wait um so bye guys Remember to subscribe and see you in the next one. Thank you.